fiberglass work I'm about to do you can see it was shipped to me let me open it up and I'll show you what I got all right this is what we got we got a dash pad for a box Chevy it's going in a Landau coupe it belongs to Stizo he got a YouTube channel called State of Stizo I'm going to put it down in the description too. It should be popping up. Go ahead and subscribe to him. Check him out. But he sent me this here. He want me to fiberglass it. He ain't going to... Um, he don't want the dash shiny and gloss. He told me just to fiberglass it and prime it up so he can get it painted because he didn't know what color the paint was actually. So I told him to send me uh, a piece of the material he gonna get it wrapped with and let me see how you think he put it he put it up in here this the material he got his door panels wrapped with and I told him I'd try to get it matched up some paint matched up with it and put it kind of flat or matte let me see if I can get that done. I'm not sure if I can. But if I can, I'll go ahead and paint it. He also sent me the speaker grills here. It looks like it's plastic dip. But I'm going to have to get that dip up off there. Just so I can paint it. So my paint will be able to stick. But I don't know how I'm going to get it up off there. Up in here. It's going to take me a while. But I'll come up with something. Let me turn it over. It's gonna go like that. I'm just gonna fiberglass these in place. Take out these cracks. But my first step is trying to get this plastic dip up off. So I'm going to go ahead and come up with something, get that off. Then I'll cut you back on. What I did, I just got me some lacquer thinner. Put some down in the bucket. I'm letting it soak now. It's coming off of it. I also got a scotch bright. I had to start rubbing it. See where's it going to come off, but it's coming off, you can see. Let this one here soak some more, then I'll go ahead and put this one in there. Finally got that plastic dip off. Got it all over my hands now. But our next step... It's um, I think this one here go on this side. This one go on this side. But our next step is trying to dump all these cracks off. We ain't gonna have to fill the cracks up with nothing because we're gonna fiberglass it. So we need to get all these cracks flat because where it's cracked at, it's lifted up on the ends. So we're gonna have to either push them down. I get a knife or something or a drummer and bevel it off. I think I'm just gonna push them down. Cause we're gonna fiberglass it anyway, so we ain't gotta fill the cracks up. We're gonna put fleece over this here, then fiberglass. It. 
Let me take care of that, and I'll cut you back on. I pretty much get everything knocked down like I want it. It's still a few hot spots, but I should be able to take care of that once I put that fleece on, let it on off. Also did up in here. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take this fleece here, like that. We're going to wrap it. We're going to glue it down with this spray adhesive. I'm going to go ahead and cut me, I'm going to cut me a piece of fleece the size of the dash pad. I'll be good to go. Got me a piece cut. It's kind of too short. But I can make it work because this fleece is real stretchable once I put it on. Now what you want to do, you want to kind of even it out. And then you throw half of one side over to the other. Then you just do half and half. You do this side first, then work your way around to this side. So I'm just going to spray some here. I'm going to put this end down, then I move on to the next side. I pretty much got the top done. Got to smooth out some more spots, but what I'm finna do now, I'm finna overlap the ends onto the inside. Also gonna cut this vent out. I'm just gonna put a slit right in the middle of it. Then I'm gonna wrap it over around the backside. You see I got it overlap around the backside now. I done did the whole piece. I done overlapped the edges also. I'm gonna turn it over for you. The reason why you wanna overlap it because when you put that resin on, if it ain't overlap, it's gonna start interacting with the glue. Then it's gonna lift up on you. I'm going to leave the speaker grill holes covered up right now. I think I'm going to put a coat of resin on it, then I'm going to cut it out. But I'm going to leave it on for now. What I'm going to do now, see this dash pad here? It got like a little lift up right here. I'm going to go ahead and put some staples in that because if you don't, the resin, it'll interact with the glue also right here. It'll lift up also. So I'm going to go ahead and put some staples along that contour all the way around, way all the way down to the other end. And the staples I'm going to use, well, I'm going to use this staple gun here. Let me find the staples so I can show you what side. It's a quarter inch. I'm gonna go ahead and get that done, then I'll cut you back on. Got some staples in it. I had to put them in there at an angle because this pad was so brittle, it ain't really got nothing to staple to. Then my staple was kind of too big, so I couldn't put them straight in because it was hitting the metal. But I just want this here just enough so this resin will dry. Once the resin dry, I'll be fine. I'm going to go ahead and mix up some resin. Got my fiberglass resin. I'm going to mix them up in a paint cup. And I'm going to put it on with a chip brush. I put some cardboard down on the floor because... If you don't, you'll have some hard drips stuck to the floor.
went on and put one coat of resin on it. Once this dry, I can go ahead and take some of these staples out. The ones that ain't embedded, but the ones embedded, I'm going to leave them. But like this here, where it went, catching the nothing, I might go ahead and take them out. You can see where it lifted up a little bit right here. I might try to put something on top of it. Try to hold it down until it dry. To keep that shape. What you want to do, you want to wait till the top side dry. You want to make sure the resin dry before you start trying to resin the back side. Because you don't want to resin the top side and the back side at the same time. Because that glue will interact with the resin and then it'll lift up and then you have a big mess. So you want to make sure the dry, where the top is dry, then turn it over and do the back side. You don't need to do all of the backside. I mainly just do a little overlap of the edge so it'll stay in place. Then I might go back and trim the excess, but you really don't have to. The resin dried up now. I also went on and wrapped, I wrapped the speaker grill in aluminum foil, so you on this side, because the resin, it don't stick to aluminum foil, I just did it so I can know where to cut at, so I know exactly where the grill go. I just wrapped it, and put it down in place, and I put a can on top of it so it'll stay in place until the resin dry. Now I can go ahead and cut this out and put the speaker grill in place. Because I'm a fiberglass on top of this. I'm a fiberglass it in place. Now what I'm finna do, I'm finna go ahead and take me a box cutter. I'm just gonna cut out around where that little line at. Then I'm gonna put my speaker grill in place. So I can store fiberglass in it on both sides. Now that's all I got to do is just sit this down in place. I got both openings cut out. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to take my DA. Put some 80 grit sandpaper on it. I'm just gonna knock this down some just so my fiberglass mat will lay flush. Try to keep the air pockets out. But you don't really have to do it, but it'd be a lot easier getting that fiberglass mat to lay flat and flush. speaker grill set in place. I'm going to go ahead and mix up some bundle glass. I'm just going to fill in the cracks. To make this transition real smooth before I start fiberglassing it. Which you don't have to do it, but I'm doing it. A lot of these steps you could skip, but I like to go the extra mile. So, in the long run, make my sanding a lot easier. Because once I uh, transition this off real good, the fiberglass will sit flush. You don't have to worry about trying to make this contour.
fiberglass filler done dried up. Now I'm finna take the same DA with the 80 grit sandpaper on it. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this down. Got it knocked down. Now I'm finna go ahead and fiberglass the whole piece. What I did, I just tore off some pieces of fiberglass mat. This fiberglass mat here. Got me some resin. Gonna go ahead and put some hardener in it. Then I got a chip brush. That's what I'm used to put it on with. Fiberglass resin done dried. Now what I'm finna do, I'm finna flip it over and get my sander and I'm gonna sand all these loose fiberglass hairs off. Then I'm gonna fiberglass from here to where I stopped that. Plus you wanna make sure you get enough fiberglass mat on the other side of where these screw holes at. It's four, two on each one of them. Plus, it's also a hole on each side, right there. I'm gonna have to drill it out. Once I strengthen it up, I'm gonna drill it out with my drill bit. But you just wanna make sure you get enough fiberglass mat there, so it don't push through. Put some more fiberglass mat and resin on the top. I had brought it out in the sun so it'll harden up. It harden up a lot quicker in the sun than it do on the inside. I done brought the dash back in. Everything done dried up. I'm finna go ahead and sand this down with 80 grit sandpaper. On the DA. Got it all sanded down. You can see I still got some low spots. It's the dark areas and pinholes. But I'm gonna mix up some Rondo. And Rondo is brushable filler. 
it's filler you can brush on instead of trying to spread it on I got a video on how to make it it should be popping up now I also put it down in the description but I'm gonna go ahead and mix that up and brush it on Finished up on the run though. You wanna have some drips around the edges. You can take your brush and hit it again until it start hardening up. Or you can just let it just drip because you can always sand it off at the end once you get uh once it dry up I let the rundo sit overnight everything dried up I also went back and put a little fiberglass filler up in here. I seen some little low spots on the back side. I'm gonna turn it over. You can see where I did the fiberglass filler at. Trying to build it up. Then I'm gonna take my sander and sand it down flush. That's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna take my DA. With 80 grit on it, go ahead and start sanding it. As you can see, I hit it with the 80 grit. I still got to hit it some more. I just wanted to show you where you could tell all your low spots. The low spots is the dark area. So I need to bring this down some more where it should be. Everything should be dug off by the time I get it brought down. If it don't be dug off, I might got to go back and put in some filler and bring it up if I take it down too low. You can see the low spots real good now. All the little dark areas, them low spots. I got quite a few over here. But it's coming together now. Low spot, low spot. I'm just gonna mix up some fiberglass, well not fiberglass, but some lightweight filler, Evercoat. I'm just gonna mix them up. I'm gonna use my spreader on this one here. I'm just gonna spread it just on the spots, this low. Same process. I'm gonna go ahead and sign this with 80 grit. Pretty much got to sand it down with the DA, but I'm gonna go back and hit it with a block in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and trim all this out first. When it came to college, outside of uh, the West Coast, you know, you know, yeah, the breakthrough athlete. <laughs> I got it cleaned up pretty good. I still got a little bit more shaping to do, but it's pretty much done. I'm finna go ahead and block it now. I'm finna block the surface because I did all this with the DA. I'm going to use this block here. I got some 180 on it. 
Got another block I might use. It's a little bit bigger. But I'm going to start off with this one. Wrapping it up now. What I'm finna do now, I'm finna blow it off. Then I'm gonna put some, I'm gonna put two lines up in here. From here to here. And from here to here. This how the original dash pad made. It's connected. Got like a little groove, two little grooves running from that to that. I'm just gonna run some masking tape. Then I'm gonna take my little saw here. I'm just gonna cut some grooves in it. I did it on uh, my first box shaver door panels. I did it on that years back. You can see the lines in it now. What I'm finna do now, I'm finna go ahead and open it up some. I'm just use some sandpaper and I'm gonna fold it in half and just go down in between it and open it up. Just move it on out. Now what I'm finna do, I'm finna go out here and test fit it before I move to my next step. Everything fitted pretty good when I test fitted it. I'm just finna straighten this part here out. Up under the dash. Along this lip. I'm gonna kind of even it out. So it won't be jagged like that. Because you can see it if you look up under it. So I'm gonna go on and straighten it on out. Yeah, Went on and straighten that lip on out. Now what I'm finna do, I'm finna go ahead and drill these holes out. I got four holes to drill out. Just finished blowing it off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and shoot my first round of primer.
primer done dried up now. But I'm going to let it sit overnight. I'm going to come back out here in the morning and go ahead and sand it down. But I'm going to go ahead and put some glaze and put it in all my pinholes that I see. You can see them real good now. I'm just going to use the bundle glaze and put it. You can pick it up from Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot. I gotta straighten this land up some. But other than that, it's looking good. Also up in here, I gotta smooth it on out. Glaze and put it in the primer and dry it. This the next day, the following day. I'm finna go ahead and hit this with 180 again. Then I'll be ready to shoot some more prime on it. Then I'll go with my color after that. What I did, once I got through sanding with the 180, I had grabbed some 400 grit wet sand. Just to get the 180 scratches out because I'm going to go straight to my um, color. I'm going to put a texture on it. But I'm going to go straight to it. I'm not going to prime it no more because I got it down pretty good. I don't think I need to prime it again because I'm going to have a texture. And it's going to be a flat finish. So it don't got to be that smooth. It ain't going to show no imperfections because it ain't going to be gloss. But it's down real good. So I think this would be good enough. That's the look I'm going for right here. I did these eight pillar pies for my photo box Chevy four years ago. The video should be popping up now if you want to see how I did them. But it's a texture finish, flat. And how I did it, I just used this here, this truck bed coating. I'm gonna go ahead and spray this with this here. Then I'll be ready to shoot the color on top of this. I had went on and sprayed the back side of the dash pad with the bed liner coating. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over. Then I'm gonna cut you back on and spray the top side. So the truck bed coating. I was having problems with the can. I had a couple of runs, but I had just got a wet cloth and just dabbed it and got the run out. I'm gonna go ahead and spray the color now. I got the color over here. Be spraying it at my Sada Mini Jet 4400 HBLP. It's a 1.2 tip.
is three coats of the base coat. Then dry it up. I'm going to go ahead and spray the clear. It's going to be a flat clear. It goes on glossy, but once it flashes, it turns flat. Stop. Right from the bottom to the top, from the